so today we're going to be talking about menopause which is a subject that I'm really interested in because this is what my own doctoral research is all about. So as we're going to see today menopause really is a culturally and, and socially influenced experience so we're just going to go and get after it we're going to get on with this right now. Something that I have picked up that, that I have found from research here is that women's experience of menopause is often something that we're not particularly well informed about or well educated about in advance. Um, and if we're lucky, sometimes we do have that older relative. We might have a mom who, who, who might share her experience with us, or we might have um, other family members. Uh, but by the same token, uh, menopause is kind of, as I just said, that culturally uh, influenced experience, and it can have some taboos around it. Uh, so that means that where we live can have a bearing on what our experience is of it. Um, so yes, yeah, some of us do have uh, that older relative, but some of you might be like me and, you know, maybe your mum's passed away l l the same as me, or it could be that you just don't have contact with those older women in your life who've gone through this experience. Maybe um, not all of us are fortunate enough to, to have uh, older women in our lives. So one thing I'd be really eager to know is how you learned, how, what, what your experience was of learning about the menopause. Because when we think about it, something we can do is to compare this to the way that we teach our children about puberty. We kind of prepare them for it, don't we? We kind of, uh, we, we, as loving, caring parents and guardians, um, we don't send our children into that difficult time without um, helping to prepare them to navigate those those changes, those psychological changes, emotional and, and of course the physical. So that is something to bear in mind that, you know, we do prepare our children for puberty. But what do we do to prepare our own selves uh, for the changes that are coming down the track in menopause? Very often we do absolutely nothing and it, it never occurs to us. It isn't something that kind of enters our consciousness very often until we start having symptoms. So that is something really that... Yeah, I'd be interested to know what your experiences were, were of that or are of that of learning about the menopause before we get on to our main subject today. And that is the five things that you are going to wish somebody, be it mom or someone else, told you about the menopause. So we're going to get on with that right now. We're going to crack on. So the first thing is, is that the menopause can happen to you at any age. Clinically speaking, how this is defined is it's the, the one year anniversary of your very last period. OK, so um, the period leading up to that, uh, you might also have symptoms as well. And we call that the perimenopause. Uh, and generally that happens between the ages of 45 and 55, but that is not always the case. Some women begin experiencing symptoms in their 30s and their 40s or even earlier. And a condition also exists called premature ovarian insufficiency. What a wonderful name. Um, which can cause menopause to happen. It's a very young age. So it's important for, for us as women to be aware of this and aware of the symptoms and signs of the menopause so that we can get that help, we can get that support and that treatment uh, with that much sooner. And why does that matter? Why is this important? Well, it doesn't just apply to any desire you might have to be a mom or, or about your fertility, about having kids. But also there are a variety of health conditions that can be exacerbated, exacerbated by the menopause. And it is important to recognise that so that we can intervene early. And a great example is that the hormonal changes that happen during menopause can have an effect on your bone density, things like that, development of osteoporosis. So that's a great example. So if you were to develop those the, that at an earlier age, then you'd be potential, potentially living for years and years with a very painful condition that could be easily remedied by kind of 
increasing your calcium intake and things like that, doing the weight bearing exercise. So understanding and being aware of any menopause symptoms uh, that you might be experiencing can really help you to be aware of that risk and to intervene and to, to reduce that risk to yourself. Of course, menopause can also happen for us earlier than we think. If we find ourselves affected by certain other health conditions, uh, things like cancer, for example, can lead to treatment that might mean that we, we, we kind of are medically induced into menopause much earlier uh, because of a medical intervention or, or a surgery. So that could be the case for some of us too. So as we can see, menopause is not something that just happens to an older woman um, in kind of nature's way. It's not always going to be decades and decades away for all of us. So being aware of the symptoms, aware of your own body, aware of how things are for you, is going to help you to understand exactly what is happening for you. And if you think that you're having menopause symptoms, let's get in there let's get you the right support and the help from the right source um, so i'm going to put a couple of links in the description for you for great places to go for that information and potentially also support okay the second thing that we're going to talk about here the number two on our list is that it's not all just about hot flushes and missed periods um, hot flushes and, and, and those kind of sweats and things, they are classic symptoms of the menopause. Um, but lots of us immediately associate that with menopause. And, but in research and medical terminology, we call those vasomotor symptoms. And these symptoms are not the only ones though. Um, though they might be the first that some women experience during peri perimenopause, there are a lot of other things that can be going on too that can crop up around this time. And that might be things like cognitive stuff, memory issues, the brain fog. Uh, we also might see mood changes um, and also um, urinary issues, uh, more, more infections, things like that. Um, there are also sexual symptoms uh, like vaginal dryness and atrophy. And sex might become uncomfortable or even painful for some women. So, um, yeah, there are, there are those changes too, as well as all the emotional um, mood changes that you might experience. So, so yeah, not just about being a hot, sweaty lady. There are lots of other things there to look out for. So let's move on to the third, third thing here. And that is, it's that it is completely normal to have difficult thoughts and feelings about the menopause. Where did you sign that contract that says that you must not have strong or difficult emotions and things become difficult in life? Oh, that's right. It does not exist. Um, menopause is not always difficult for every woman. Uh, but some women do find it more difficult than others. And the reasons for that are as different as the women themselves. There are many changes involved when it comes to this life event. And they are physical. Yeah, we have the physical ones. But they're also emotional. And they might be heavily influenced by the, by the social, our social world and our relationships, the people around us. So menopause can also be strongly linked to the ideas we have around our own self-identity. And that means who we are. And all the roles that are linked to femininity, including motherhood and our sexuality. So both of those things are deeply personal parts of our individual self-identity. And uh, so anything that, that, that kind of pokes at that, Anything that impacts upon that is going to stir up those emotions, those difficult emotions for us. So if that's the case for you, then that is entirely normal. We're all human beings here. And to experience difficult emotions is part of our humanity. Just the same as the wonderful and warm emotions are part of the human experience. 
So if you've struggled with this kind of emotional roller coaster around the time of the menopause, then that would not be unusual at all. And the great news is, is there are lots of things we can do to help ourselves during that more difficult time, perhaps, that we're having. So here's our number four thing, and I really like to talk about this, and that is that there are many positives for many women uh, during the menopause. It can bring in this sense of emancipation for many women, and that is freedom from periods and the inconvenience and expense of them. So just imagine waving bye-bye to uh, PMS and period pain forever. Just imagine how wonderful that would be. And it could also be the case that during the perimenopause, women's periods can become heavier and a little more unpredictable. So when the menopause finally comes uh, and that all that stops and all that unpredictability is gone, it's gone for good. Now, in some cultural and religious contexts, I know this from, um, from my research, uh, menstruation can also limit the things a woman can and can't <coughs> participate in at certain times. Uh, and even for me, um, there are certain things I, I, I practice yoga, so there are certain uh, asanas I can't do when menstruating. <clears throat> so that, that's a good example too. Um, so yeah, no excuse for not doing the headstand after the menopause. So after menopause for many women, they can also gain freedom from all those trappings of that biological prerogative uh, to reproduce. So there's no need to use contraception. You've got freedom from the worry of being pregnant. And that can be very empowering and liberating for women all over the world. And this can be even more true. Um, again, depending on where a woman lives, uh, not all of us are fortunate enough to be able to access good free healthcare. Um, or be able to access free contraception or as well depending on where you live in some places abortion may be more difficult to access or maybe even illegal so f for women f for whom that is true uh, menopause can be a very welcome relief um, and also for women who find contraception problematic for either medical or ethical reasons. So, what else? What other good news is there here? Well, it can be that in some places in the world, women enjoy a heightened degree of social status at menopause age. And then they become the mother-in-law. They kind of become respected um, and gain that increased authority sometimes within a family, which is absolutely wonderful for them. So that can also happen. See, we're seeing those cultural differences again. That can be the case. So often we have a tendency to see the negative, the painful symptoms. Um, or, or we might link the menopause to these kind of unwelcome ideas we've got around ageing. But there are so many powerful and empowering changes too that can happen at this stage in our life experience. So the fifth thing here is that it's not all just about HRT and medications. There are loads of ways for you to feel healthy and happy during the menopause. And that might include things like having great social support, sharing your experiences with others like we're doing today. The power of talking and sharing with others is something that can't really be measured and it's going to make you feel less alone. And as well, what we're going to do all the way in this channel uh, is to try and bust down any taboos, any shame that we might be carrying around inside, especially about something that's completely natural and something that happens to 100% of 50% of the population. So what else can we do? Well, our family doctor um, 
when we ask them about the menopause, aside from the HRT, GP might recommend what they often term lifestyle changes. But what I would suggest is that you spend a little bit of time paying into the bank of you. And what I mean by that is you take some time to practice really good self-care and take that time to prioritise your needs. Uh, all of you need, not just the physical ones, but the emotional and the social ones as well. So that can mean eating foods that nourish your body and that you enjoy. It might mean getting active, moving your body in a way that you find fun and positive. Or, you know, that could be anything. That could be playing with the kids or, or a pet even. So it can mean doing things that you enjoy with people that you feel good being around. Um, something else that you can also do around this time is to think about how you, you can just deposit a little bit every day into that bank of you, little and often. And there are other important things that you can do also, like, uh, yeah, you can you can look into things like vitamins uh, and and supplements and things like that there are so many things that are uh, uh, alternative therapies that have been very useful for lots of different women uh, around the time of their menopause uh, so there is an absolutely huge list of things everything from yoga to uh, um, acupuncture um, to walking so many different studies and so many different things around menopause so there is an extensive list. This is not just all about drugs and hormones and those kind of medical interventions. Uh, so I'd really like to cover some of that in another video. I'm really hoping to do that. So uh, it, just go ahead and let me know what has been working for you. What things have been effective for you and have uh, helped you to feel, feel really at your best around this time of menopause. So I hope that you, you'll get involved and maybe share some of your experience with, with me. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed the video and that it has resonated with you. If that has been the case, then don't forget to share and like and subscribe for more videos like this one all around um, health related topics, health and well-being. Uh, so I'll be posting more videos each week. So just stay tuned and subscribe so that you don't miss anything. That's everything for now. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time with more psychologically informed videos. Uh, just, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do everything on this channel with curiosity and love. So I'll hope that you will join me next time for more of the same.